if it's a longer workout, it's gonna be really difficult for you to start adding a bunch of skill-based practice sessions into the front end of that. Um, we've done some other videos on like when you're you know, doing a lesson plan for chippers, you're probably gonna have to use the movements to warm up. Uh, we're gonna do this, but in a little bit longer form, uh, in the form of 30 minutes to cover two movements. Uh, and, I, and I would challenge you guys to try to do that. Um, a, it's gonna be really tough because you're uh, not facilitating the, si the timeline very uh, efficiently, or you're gonna get through it really quickly because you're not actually doing any teaching. And, uh, and, but in order to fill this and fill it efficiently, we're gonna have to have a plan and know what I wanna do there, and we're gonna have to move from piece to piece. But that's really how I start layering those skill sessions in there, which is really just my specific warm up. All right, guys, welcome back to Jerk Block Talk. I'm Jason Fernandez. We're here at CrossFit Rife. Today, uh, I want to give you guys a little bit of kind of a run through. It's a little bit about lesson planning, but going back to programming, lesson planning, and a kind of some ideas about how to add skill sessions into your lesson plan, but not necessarily add a ton of extra stuff that takes away from the coaching aspect or the workout. So I chose something that has pretty high skill movements in it. Uh, I chose Amanda, so 975, this is uh, a named workout or a, uh, a benchmark workout within CrossFit of muscle up and snatch. The snatch weight on there is 135.95 and that does play a factor with regard to how I'm gonna plan this out because when my athletes don't have really far to go with regard to what the loading should be on the scale of light, medium, or heavy, then that changes things with regard to warm up and how long all that's gonna take. Uh, but what I've got on here is a pretty standard 60 minute timeline. And what I've done is I've kind of broken off the major pieces that we already know we need to have. I know I'm gonna have zero to four minutes roughly on the brief uh, on the back end over here. I've got five minutes for the cool down. I've got three minutes for the cleanup. And I put my wad in here uh, from 40 to 52. I allotted about 12 minutes, which is probably a little bit on the long end because we know Amanda, we really like to see Amanda under 10, um, so probably 12, so I gave myself a little buffer there. I added my break in here, and then I put a four minute general warm up in there. So how would I go about adding skills or skill sessions into this where I can layer two things on top of each other? I can do a lot of teaching, but I can also add some skill-based practice in on top of that. And I can have a general warm up, or we could double down on this and add another set of skill that also could double as a warm up. So what I would do here in this scenario, or what you could do, is in what I was gonna use here for a general warm up, um, I would maybe play around with doing some double under practice here. So this is a great way to get warmed up, but also practice some skill based movement. It doesn't require a ton of warm up. Realistically, none of us need to do a lot of mobility or anything like that before we grab a jump rope and start jump roping. So you can do a lot of different drills within the jump rope category, singles, doubles, alternating back and forth, just working on jumping and doing stuff like that. And four minute is gonna be plenty enough time to get the heart rate up, but it's going to be enough time for you to get enough reps in there where we're probably going to be able to get a little bit of adaptation in there and get them ready. And while they're doing that, they're working on the jumping for the snatch. So their ankles and their hips are getting ready. And they're also working on getting the shoulders warm because we have to go to that overhead position in order to do that. Now, if I'm going to end this at eight and then I'm going to have my break at 38, that gives me 30 minutes to play with. Now, these are both fairly complex movements, so it wouldn't be really out of the ordinary to just split this down the middle and have 15 minutes allotted for each. So if I'm going to go 15 on this one, what I'm going to do is this is going to be the 23 mark. And then you can do this in whatever order you want. I would recommend doing it in the order of do the loaded movement second because I don't want them to warm up and then come back to and have to warm up again. So I want them to kind of warm up with the loaded movement and then come back to that. So I'm gonna do my weightlifting here and my gymnastics over here. Now in that window, I can break that, those 15 minute increments up into smaller increments and practice even more. So let's say I was gonna break this into one, two and three sections as far as the, the muscle up portion of that. 
The first thing I'm probably gonna do is just work on a little bit of kip swing movement, just working on some of that stuff for about five minutes because we know that the gymnastics kipping so the gymnastics kip swing is the same kip swing that they're going to be using for the muscle up. From there, I might go to working on some low transition drills for the muscle up, like just the low rings that hang from a pull up rig or something like that, where they can practice the skill set of the muscle up, but, ha but do it with their feet on the floor. Five minutes there, just practicing on false grip, making sure the transitions are good. Meanwhile, that's 10 minutes of them getting those movers going and starting to kind of grease the skids on some movement patterns that we're gonna need to see for the muscle up. And then spend the last five minutes working on things like strict muscle ups, working on things like jumping muscle ups for those people who are kind of on the cusp, or the seated muscle up, which is all things that we cover in the level one course. So that's how I would act, put some skill-based movement in here. And my skill-based movement, which is also gonna be practiced for the workout, can be scaled up or down based on my athletes that I'm dealing with. So I have, I have people that are fairly advanced, like I'm just gonna fast forward them through this and we're gonna get to strict muscle ups over here because when they get to the workout, they're gonna be doing kipping muscle ups and they're gonna be really, really ready to go. Um, but in there, I'm gonna get a lot of volume in in that 15 minutes. 15 minutes for one movement is a really, really long time. Um, so that would be what I would do on something like this. And then from there, I'm gonna transition right over here and I might not necessarily split this in threes. Uh, this might look a little bit more like in half and split that movement into like seven and eight or eight and seven. But I'm probably gonna do something like the Bergner warm up on the front end and then spend seven or eight minutes loading barbells getting to 135 and 95 or whatever that appropriate kind of light to moderately light weight on the barbell for my athletes. When I'm doing that, I'm also gonna get to double check on my athletes, hey, like how quickly can they move the barbell because we know this isn't supposed to be like really slow singles for the snatch. Um, so in there, what you could do is, if you really wanted to break this up and you did wanna work some skills in there, uh, you could just move through the Bergner warm up a little bit faster, again, this all does matter depending on the loading that we're going to. 135, most of your athletes should be able to get there in two jumps. If they're gonna to go to 135, most of us could probably go 95, 135, three at the most, if that's the weight that we're going to. Uh, but if I did wanna break this into threes, I could do like five minutes Bergner warm up. If I wanted to add a skill-based movement in there uh, with regard to the snatch, I could do something like five minutes where they're working up to load and they're working like a heaving snatch balance just to work on the skill of getting the active shoulders in the receiving position and moving their feet and then spend the last five or so minutes just working on the snatch because I've gone from loaded or excuse me, unloaded with the PVC pipe, just working on skills for about five minutes. Then I've gone to just a particular piece of that skill, which is the receiving position. They can do this with a barbell or lighter weights. So you can give them rep schemes or whatever you want. And then from there, I have five minutes to load the barbell. It's, they're gonna be able to load the barbell faster if, you went, if you've gone through the PVC pipe practice and then the heaving snatch balance. Uh, but this is just a really good way to prime the system. But I've also started to get them some skills when I'm planning my lesson plan out like this and I'm putting these skills in here and I'm making them work, these are days where I'm gonna get somebody their first muscle up or somebody's gonna, the light's gonna go on in the snatch and they're gonna be able to load to 95 or 135 that day because they got an appropriate amount of practice. The CNS is ready to go. And, uh, and then we'll see some PRs on that workout. So this is just an example of how to add some skill-based stuff. And if you notice guys, this is basically just how you would run your workout or your lesson plan anyway. What we did in this scenario was we just kind of removed the general warmup of this whole thing. We added another skill-based movement in there that doubles as a general warmup, but is a highly technical skill. And then we layered that into the workout. <clears throat> a lot of this depends on what is the duration of the workout. So if it's a longer workout, it's gonna be really difficult for you to start adding a bunch of skill-based practice sessions into the front end of that. Um, we've done some other videos on like when you're you know, doing a lesson plan for chippers, you're probably gonna have to use the movements to warm up. Uh, we're gonna do this, but in a little bit longer form, uh, in the form of 30 minutes to cover two movements. Uh, and, I, and I would challenge you guys to try to do that. Um, a, it's gonna be really tough because you're uh, not facilitating the, si the timeline very uh, efficiently, or you're gonna get through it really quickly because you're not actually doing any teaching. And, uh, and, but in order to fill this and fill it efficiently, we're gonna have to have a plan and know what I wanna do there and we're gonna have to move from piece to piece. But that's really how I start layering those skill sessions in there, which is really just my specific warm up with a little bit more volume and intent in the specific warm up to kind of really touch some skills on receiving position or the muscle up portion of that. So 
just an idea to throw some things out there about how you could build a lesson plan for something like this and teach it as a skill-based piece and then roll those skill sessions into the workout. And what you'll see is pr people are probably gonna perform really, really well in those days. So uh, if you have any questions about this, guys, please uh, drop those in the comments. And if you like this content, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'll see you next time. Thanks.